வணக்கம் வெல்கம் டு திஸ் கிளாஸ் ஆன் பை மெக்கானிக்ஸ் வி ஹவ் பின் டிஸ்கஸிங் இன்ட்ரடக்டரி மெக்கானிக்ஸ் ஸ்டாட்டிக்ஸ் அண்ட் டைனமிக்ஸ் ஸோ வில் கண்டினியூ அவர் டிஸ்கஷன் ஆன் பேசிக் மெக்கானிக்ஸ் ஸோ இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வில் பி ஃபோக்கஸிங் ஆன் லிவர்ஸ் இன் த மஸ்குலோஸ்கெல்டல் சிஸ்டம் வாட் ஆர் த டைப்ஸ் ஆஃப் லிவர்ஸ் in general what are the types of livers and types of livers present in the human body in the musculoskeletal system and some examples of the types of livers so human movements are essentially happening through a combination through a set of livers through a system of livers a liver is a rigid bar that turns about an axis of rotation or a fulcrum this is something that we know from high school physics in this case in the human body what is the rigid bar and what is the fulcrum that we are discussing well for the purpose of this discussion for almost all the cases you could consider that the bone is the rigid body under discussion so the bone is a rigid bar that turns about the axis of rotation what is the axis of rotation the axis of rotation that we are discussing is the joints about which the movement is happening for example our favorite example is the case of the elbow joint i am doing this elbow curls bicep curls i am doing this right so that is happening about the elbow joint so that is the fulcrum or the axis about which the rotation is happening what is the rigid body that is move, making this movement in this case this is actually a couple of uh, bones but for the purpose of discussion you could consider this to be a rigid body this is actually two bones the radius and ulna that are moving but you could consider that to be a rigid body that is uh, moving about the fulcrum so once you have formed the liver once there is the axis of rotation and the resistance and the force a uh, point of force application are decided the configuration cannot be changed so once you have formed a, a liver their configuration cannot be changed but it is possible for you to utilize it more efficiently by changing the force application or the direction of force application and so on so essentially you could try to optimize the function of livers livers rotate about an axis in this case marked by a here as a result of an applied force marked by f here this is also sometimes called as effort right being applied to it to cause the movement against an external resistance or weight marked by r here this is the example that we saw in the previous video where we said that a small amount of force applied at this point is sufficient to overcome a relatively larger amount of r why is this the case we said that is because the moment arm or the distance about which the rotation is happening or the distance from the axis for the force and for the resistance are different and the force has an advantage so the applied force can be less to overcome a relatively larger amount of resistance this is what we said right so in this case here you have a case in which you are having a bone that represents the two bars and uh, the elbow joint is the axis and the muscles that will contract and apply the force in this case for example i'm considering this to be the elbow joint but this can be any other joint also please note the point of application of this force is here but the resistance is here is it not so axis of rotation is here so the perpendicular distance between the axis and the resistance is much higher than the perpendicular distance between the line of action of force and the axis note that uh, this might change we will come to that in uh, another discussion this is the line of action of force 
in this case this is the line of action of force in this case so the momentum is the perpendicular distance between the line of action of force okay something that could that may change depending on the force that is applied and depending on the mechanical configuration that we are discussing we will discuss that in the future slide so depending on the location of the axis of rotation or the fulcrum and the resistance and the applied force levers can be classified into three types we know this from high school physics but anyway let us refresh this a case in which the force and the resistance are on two sides of the axis like this a case in which the force and resistance are on two sides of the axis like you have a seesaw right that case is called as class 1 lever a case in which the axis is on one side the resistance is on one side and the force is on the other in particular when the resistance is between the force and the axis when the resistance is between the force and axis it is called a class 2 lever and when the force is between the axis and the resistance it is called a class 3 lever many of these things we know from high school note the perpendicular distance between the force and the axis is called force arm and between the resistance and the axis is called as resistance arm these are the things ah, and by the way this is the resistance arm is it not the distance between the axis and the resistance is the resistance arm and the force and the axis is the force arm just a small error that i'm just correcting so th the types of lever is something that we know from high school but something that we need to remind ourselves of now which type of lever is most prevalent in the human body there's no such a requirement it turns out that the human body has all these types of levers we will see that in a future slide what is mechanical advantage mechanical advantage is the amount of resistance divided by the amount of force so when you apply less force that can overcome a greater uh, resistance that means that the mechanical advantage will be greater than one when you have to apply a larger amount of force to overcome a relatively smaller uh, sized resistance that would mean that it is not a mechanical advantage in that case mechanical advantage will be less than one that does not mean that mechanical advantage itself are, uh, is necessarily always a desirable quantity that is not the case as we will see in a future slide. Now suppose I have a situation in which I can change the force arm and the resistance arm as per uh, wish let us say let us consider a simple case of um, class 1 lever and I can move the axis of rotation let us say for example. Now if the axis is exactly in the middle such that the force arm and the resistance arm are equal in that case an equal amount of force will be required to overcome a specific resistance obvious no specific. Uh, now suppose there is a case in which the force arm is much greater than the resistance arm in this case a smaller amount of force is sufficient to overcome a larger resistance mechanical advantage but there may also be cases in which the force arm will be smaller than the resistance arm right in this case the system will have to produce a much greater force to overcome a smaller resistance because the system is at a mechanical disadvantage that does not necessarily mean that this is undesirable there are spaces and places 
where mechanical advantage is a desirable quality. And then there are places where mechanical advantage may not be so desirable. Because this resistance arm in this case is very high, a small change in the theta, in the small change in the angle, let us say a force is produced and this force is a great, this force is sufficient to move this uh, resistance. In that case, a small change in the let us say it moves to a configuration like this for example, by some theta. Right? A small change in theta will have a greater change in the distance by which r can be moved. This is the advantage that you get with range of movement. Okay. Range of motion. Also likewise, because this r, this distance is greater, it turns out that the speed with which this capital R, the resistance can be moved also is higher. So, in some places there is a necessity for the human body to move faster and further. In those places, you will be compromising a greater amount of force. So, you will be at a mechanical disadvantage to have a greater range of motion and a greater velocity, speed of motion. In some cases, it is the mechanical advantage that is desired. In those cases, of course, because of that reason, because of the same reason, the range of motion and the velocity of motion will be compromised. So, you cannot have both a mechanical advantage and a great speed of motion and a great range of motion, you will have to choose. So, depending on that specific joints may either have a very large range of motion and a very fast motion or can overcome a very large amount of force, but need not necessarily have a large range of motion. So, depending on that the type of lever is chosen. Let us remind ourselves of uh, some practical examples of the types of levers remember. So, this person is trying to overcome uh, this resistance offered by these blocks and in this case the fulcrum or the axis of rotation, axis of rotation is between the applied force and the resistance. No? This is a class 1 lever, we know this. The other case is when a person is moving this cart here, in this case the resistance is acting between the axis and the force this is a class 2 lever and then you have the case of the nut cracker. Right? In this case, the applied force is between the resistance and the axis of rotation. Right? This is a class 3 lever, this is the ex ex case of the nut cracker. So, in this video, we have seen the types of levers and the use of levers in the human musculoskeletal system and some examples of uh, the types of levers and we have seen the use or the application of different types of levers in human motion, why in some cases it might be desirable to have a mechanical advantage whereas in some cases it might be desirable to have a greater range of motion and speed of motion. With this, we come to the end of this video. Thank you very much for your attention.